Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back online, although at a different time. It's also good to know that so many of us have joined us. I truly hope that we don't have anybody logging in at, you know, 1.30. We've been there using that time for the past couple of weeks. Nevertheless, given the changes that we're experiencing, as many of you know, Yesterday, the government announced new regulations for meeting regarding churches. That, that figure is now down to 10 people that are allowed. Early in the week, the leadership did make a decision to uh, suspend services uh, indefinitely. So we don't know how long that we'll be out there for, I mean online for. It seems like it could be for the rest of the winter at least. Because, you know, in, from all indications, those cases are going to go up back because of Christmas. So we'll be, out there, we'll be online for a while. And this is the time that we're going to be using. So we're not going to go back to the 9.30 time. It will be at 11 a.m. Today, I want to keep on the subject of COVID-19. Because you know what? We can't stop talking about that subject for now, at least. You have different perspectives, we have different angles, we have the scriptural or the prophetic, possible prophetic angle, we have also the social impact that, because you know what, COVID affects each and every one of us in some way. And it's the main reason why we are not able to meet here physically. I mean, at, at the Trinity Presbyterian Church. The title for this sermon, it's a tongue twister. So listen carefully. The title is Certainly, It's Uncertainty. Certainly, It's Uncertainty. Because that's what we're talking about as far as COVID is concerned. So we are in a time when we have never, this generation at least, we have never gone through a pandemic like this. The major one was back in 1918 with the Spanish flu. So the world is on a lockdown right now, understandably so, because of the ramifications of this pandemic. We hear lives being lost every day you hear. It, it has been kind of stressful to be honest with you. You turn on the radio each day and you hear, all you're hearing is new records being set as far as cases are concerned. Over the past couple of weeks, at least in Ontario, that's what we are hearing. New records, new records. Hospital, hospital counts are up. Um, the ICUs are filling up. And it gets kind of stressful and can be stressful having to deal with this for us so now we are and we are hearing you know restaurants and uh, and other business places again understandable so they they don't know what is going to happen they were fearing that another lockdown could damage could put them out of business and it, it goes on and on and on the new re restrictions are there for 28 days we don't know what will happen after the 28 days because it's going to lead right into the busiest period of the year so it's very uncertain what lies ahead for us as a planet. It's not even so much as a community or as a city or as a town, but as the planet, because this thing, this pandemic has spread its tentacles all over the world. Just about every country on the planet is affected. And it boils down to the reality that you and I are also affected. In many ways, we are seated here, or wherever you are watching this, this um, live streaming from, in different places. But the, the point is we're not able to meet normally that, that, than we, that we usually meet. So it has affected us in that way. Our spiritual lives is paramount to each and every one of us. It's our walk, it's our hope. And then from the other side of the coin, it's affecting us economically. People have lost jobs. Government 
uh, have been doling out money to make up or to help those who have you know been going through tough times how long can they dole out money for who is going to pay for it? all of that so it goes on and on health wise the impact is there as well we pray earnestly that we don't really get sick that we have to go to the hospitals because that's another dimension to itself where you know hospitals are crowded and you hear stories i heard a couple of them this week where people have gone there and they've been staying for hours to wait for treatment because of the overcrowding in terms of the cases you know of covid getting priority people who are on the surgery list are waiting longer they don't know when they will get that vital surgery to help them recover whatever illness is there they're dealing with so we have the the economic side of it there as well and that is very important as a society when the economic side is affected then it just filters down to just about every aspect of our lives brethren we live in an age of uncertainty there is no ifs and buts about that since the last world war i don't think we have gone through or and or the great depression through so much uncertainty in our lives and one may argue that it's a natural part of our lives yes to live uncertain this, the scriptures speak of we don't know what tomorrow may bring that is telling us you know how uncertain things are but to the extent that we're seeing it now, that's the point I'm driving at, where it's not confined to the GTA or just the Ontario, it's the planet. Everywhere there is uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen next year. Earlier this year they were talking about, and I was hoping at least by the Feast of Tabernacles this thing would be over so we could go our respective ways, those who are going to the feast, those who are traveling, and look, it's now November and we're still here now, the second wave, we're here in more cases. On top of that, now we're projecting into 2022. That's what I'm hearing arguments about, that we won't get rid, even with a vaccine. There have been developments on the front about vaccine. That's another story that I'm not going to get into on this presentation, but the vaccine is coming. And even with a vaccine, I think I heard the Prime Minister said yesterday, even with a vaccine, they won't be back to any semblance of normality until maybe around 2022, sometime in 2022. So next year, 2021, we are looking at a very uncertain and tough year because of COVID. I took, I took a look yesterday at the, uh, last night actually, at the cases of COVID because, you know, they keep just changing by the hour. <laughs> if, you, if you've gone some, pages you can see the hourly or daily changes last week when i looked around the same time last week we had 52.4 million cases worldwide last night when i looked, it was at 55.6 million cases last friday 34.3 million people recovered yet last night 35.8 million people recovered that's 1.2 million last week up to yesterday 1.34 million last friday the u.s had 10.2 million cases last night it was up to 11.9 million cases and the u.s is the still the epicenter that is where that has the most cases in the world and it's kind of worrisome. Sometimes you look, you get those pictures from the US and you just see people going about life as normal, no mass, no physical distancing. They just live as if nothing is happening, but people are dying. That figure I heard last night is approaching. It's well over 200,000, between 200,000 and, two, and a quarter million people have died in the US. So brethren, the times that we are living in, there is no doubt of how uncertain it is. Because each day we 
we rise, we don't know exactly what we're going to hear. The BBC, which is a credible source for information, says earlier, a few months ago, that although the coronavirus may not hit global, um, hit global health as sorry, catastrophically as the bubonic plague did in the 14th century, the latest pandemic will certainly change the world. It says a disease may be indiscriminate in who it affects, rich or poor, but the effects it wreaks are anything but equitable between disadvantaged and privileged members of society. International lockdown and effective suspension of civic and commercial activity across entire countries has thrust up a mirror on how our economic, social, and political systems operate and forced the beginnings of global conversation on how we may need to change. COVID-19 has revealed that shaky foundations on which much of which we take for granted in the developed world is built from the intricately interwoven nature of globalized supply chains and manufacturing infrastructure, as well as there's a st stark contrast between nationalized healthcare systems and those financed by private insurance. So the, the, the speculation and the talk is everywhere about current and future implications of COVID. How will it impact economic systems? How it, will it impact the lives of people, especially those who have lost their jobs? What are the, the health effects? That's another story to itself because COVID has shown that um, uh, tests have revealed that most victims of COVID ended up with a, a blood clot when they do um, tests on, on victims. They found out that most of them died, who have died, had somehow, you know, affected by a blood clot. Organs, there are organs that are affected. And so that's another part which I don't think they have addressed fully as yet, that after COVID, what are or what will be the after effects as far as our organs are concerned? What it will leave behind, lung damage, heart damage, liver damage, we don't know. Now, I just try to get a feel of how people across the globe are, are being affected by this, because you know, there are different demographics in terms of, and, um, you know, where people live, their status, their um, economic um, situation, and so on. So from across the world, I try to get, because I'm trying to get a feel here of just, you know, sometimes you do it to satisfy your own curiosity on whether you, how you, how you are reacting, whether it's something abnormal or it's expected as a human being. This person, 21 year old, who is a, a entrepreneur from Russia, he says, the biggest lesson for me is understanding the value of time. Time is one of my really pet subjects. I've spoken about it so much or so many times because we are governed by time and we look at the past and we see what has been happening and we compare it today and we say to ourselves, have I been wasting time? Have I been redeeming the time because the days are evil? That is what the scriptures advise us. Have we been making use of our time? Have we been bogged down by trivial and, and um, trivial matters that we should at least look back at and say, you know, I, I won't allow that to happen in my life, in my life again, because, you know, the times that we're living doesn't warrant that kind of um, behavior in terms of how much time I spent on doing this or spent doing that, or should have been more focused on this. 
So he says the biggest lesson for me is understanding the value of time. During the last months, I made more use of my time than in a past year. How many of us can really attest to that? That we are using COVID to say, you know what, time is valuable. You know, the business world often speaks of time being money. But for a Christian, I think our, our um, motto should be time is value. Value for me as a, in almost every single way I can think of. Another person from India, he says, or she says, this crisis makes us socialize more than ever. We are eating together, sharing our thoughts, and playing together, which happened rarely within my family. So at least for her family, they're coming together more often. They're socializing more often. Another says, it is going, it is giving us an opportunity to look into how we need to better support our vulnerable populations in terms of food and educational resources. And this person is 19 year old from the United States. Another person from Egypt says, after the pandemic, I will put a lot of efforts into helping people who have been affected by COVID-19. I am planning to improve their health by providing sports sessions and highlighting the importance of a healthy lifestyle. Some people may start to eat healthy now because of COVID, because they realize you have to build up the immune system. That one, that's one lesson we can draw in this time of uncertainty. Do I need to improve my health? Do I need to walk more? Did I, do I need to cut out all the unhealthy foods that I eat? 17 year old from Burma, Myanmar, that's the new name for that country, a student. And he says, this crisis makes our lives harder. I do feel that our world is not ready to fight against this pandemic. The damages for developing countries like ours become double or triple compared to developed countries who have a great economic stimulus package. That is so true because in Canada, for example, we have stimulus packages by the government. Some people can stay at home and earn some money. I hope it doesn't force people into this dependency syndrome where they say, you know what? I can get government money so I don't need to go out and work. There are people who are genuinely need that. There are others probably who will just play around and say, you know what? I can drink my beer at home and watch sports during the winter. I don't have to work. There will be those. There will be those kind of people. But for the most part, we can only hope that those who are genuinely in need of that help, that they will get that help. There are opportunities the person mentioned about um, socializing and more. We can't do that through physical contact, but at least we have the mechanism through technology to keep in touch, whether it's through Skype or um, telephone, whatever the case may be. That's, we have an abundance of that technology. So that person pledges to do that. In the developed world, which the person mentioned, you see people. One of one of the, you know, and I, I just pause to say, I, I I I personally don't mind this lockdown because I think if they if they had done that from early in the year, stringent measures, then you know people probably would have been in a better position. But people just abuse it. You hear of the the big weddings going on and the big parties and the gathering at, at, at the beaches, nobody wearing any masks or any physical distancing. They can hardly wait to get out to have what? Fun. So fun takes the precedence over wellness. You know, and I, I think as responsible people of God, we, we, we should do our part because we have been told in the scriptures over and over again, in situations like this, we have to use wisdom and, and, and realize that if if this has been identified as a cause why this thing spread, then we should at least be abiding by those principles. God helps those who help themselves. And I believe genuinely if we strive to do what's the best, 
not about ourselves, but for others. And I think that is where the fallout is because people are just thinking about themselves. I want to have fun. Girls, girls going to have fun. Sing the Lapa song, right? I mean, it's not about you alone. We have people out there. We have seniors in homes who are dying. We have the overcrowded doctors and nurses in the, in the hospitals. And you think of how they have to cope, have to go to this depressing place each day to make, to help, to save people and to, to make sure they over, you know, they get over the, 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 this virus. People are not thinking about that. They're only thinking about themselves. And so it creates, it creates this aura of uncertainty on, on how this thing will play out. We don't know how COVID-19 is going to play out, what it will lead to. There is a big uncertainty there, both from economic perspective. We know from the scriptures, one thing we know, this is the beginning of sorrows, at least leading up to that. If it's not, at least these things the Bible points out is the beginning of sorrows, the birth pains, the birth pains. But as Christians, we believe God has a solution to this problem. He is the only one with a solution. So whatever stimulus packages are out there, whatever regulations the provinces and the municipalities put together, there's only one solution. God, God is the only one who has solution. Can we really look into our Bibles and draw from the experiences there of the uncertainty created when there, when there, there is a, an event or happening and God's people were faced with that kind of situation. We can go to Judges and there's a very um, familiar story there in Judges, Judges 6 with Gideon, when God calls Gideon to deliver Israel because they were in a situation they were in the hand of the Midianites and they were doing a lot of things to them. Chapter 6, verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. And the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east and they came against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. So when they planted their crops, you know what? Somebody else come and reap. The Midianites, Midianites came and reap. And they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitudes. For both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land and they destroyed. And who wouldn't be frustrated by that? You know, you plant and somebody else come and reap. You anticipate your the abundance of the harvest and somebody else came and reap. And guess what? Verse 9, 6 rather. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They were so uncertain about what prevailed no food to eat and these powerful people came and they destroyed everything so the lord sent a prophet unto the children of israel and said unto them thus saith the lord god of israel i bought you from egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and i delivered you out of the hand of the egyptians and out of the hand of all the oppressed and drained them out before you and gave you their land and i said unto you i am the lord Yahweh. Fear not the God of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. And then there's a little but. You have not obeyed my voice. You're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. And so God raised up 
Gideon, verse 13. God said unto him, and Gideon said unto him, O Lord, if Yahweh be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And so we can ask this question, and people will ask this question too. If God is for us, and I've, you know, <laughs> I hear that so often, why we have COVID inflicting so much damage and uncertainty and death toll and you know affecting people's lives? Why, why, why? Where be all in his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But no, the Lord has forsaken us. He has forsaken us. And delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. Delivered into the hand of COVID-19. And Yahweh looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Now you have to understand the Median, uh, Israel had a small army. It's a couple hundred, 300 or so. The Midianites numbered in the thousands. In the thousands. So, Verse 17, and he said unto him, if now I have found grace, that word from the Old Testament, in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. So he had a little doubt. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until thou come again. I will tarry. So he then went in and made ready a kid and, you know, he does the usual stuff. Angel, verse 20, said, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and so on and pour the broth. So all of those with the authority will hear. But in the end, brethren, the lesson is, sorry, that God used, a, you know the story, you don't have to really go into it, used a small army. Although the army was small, the Midianites, were destroyed, were destroyed. In COVID-19, Israel was so uncertain about what would happen, but God was there and God is still here today with us, his people. He's our protector and guide. So this story is so ho hopeful in a time of uncertainty. Gideon was the least of his clan, smallest of, you know, the group. But the might of God showed him what can be achieved. The Bible tells us that with God all things are possible. With just one, whether he's going to use, you know, literal sense or we may have to take it figuratively a finger just to destroy this virus he can do it just a finger <laughs> we realize that he can talk Yahweh can just speak and COVID disappears all the diseases that we have for that matter all of us who are infected with some kind of ailment Sister Marlene, I don't know if you're on the call, but you're on a bed right now. God can just, with just peek, and you walk again. That's who we are dealing with. We have to realize who we have as our Savior, that he can just peek something. We are just a little dot here. We are just vapor here. We are just grass here. We can pretend to be so mighty and, and go on as if we have everything in our authority and forgetting who God is. The one who forgives us of our transgressions. The one who says, you know what? Leave it to me. Vengeance belongs to me, not you. Because sometimes when we have our afflictions, we think we must take things into our own hands. But God is sovereign. God is in charge of my life and your life and the universe. 
never we forget who is in charge here. Never forget who is in charge. Yahweh, not us. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but he knows and he does what he feels because he is God and he's the one who created all of us. So he tells us in the word of uncertainty that we have to deal with and this is just one of them. Certainly it's uncertainty. Second Timothy 3, 1 says, this know also in that in these last days there will be dangerous times or perilous times upon the planet, not just Canada, Ontario alone. On all of us, it's going to come. So people can dismiss the Bible all they want, but they could not find a more relevant book in this day and age, which recorded the past, talks about the present, and predicts the future. In Jude 1, because the question we can ask, and you walk away from this sermon, you've heard it before too, the preparations that we have to make for the coming kingdom and what lessons that we can draw from this going forward in this time of uncertainty. What lessons? Are we preparing for the kingdom of God? Are we preparing for the time when Yahweh is gonna burst through those clouds? His son, his only begotten son, the glorified Christ, not coming in the flesh, but coming as a spirit in all his glory, shining like the sun, coming to redeem humanity, coming to take vengeance on all evil. Can we imagine that? Are we preparing for that? And if we are, what are we doing about that? Are we being bogged down by the pressures of society? our own problems and our own challenges, or are we getting up, so to speak, out of our slumber and get ready to meet Yahweh? We, it's not too early to say, but we are approaching that time when we look to God, a time to remind us of what he did for us, the Passover time, and by the way, it's coming early this year, it's in March, a time of reconciliation and forgiveness for all of us, for all the wrongs that we have done against him, for all the wrongs that you and I have done and transgressed his laws. We look forward to this time of the year coming up. Because brethren, we are at the mercy of God in this time of uncertainty that's what we are we are at the mercy of god and he's merciful his mercy endureth forever we've been saying it year in year out to all of us here in the body of christ we talk about unity of the faith we talk about getting along with one another we talk about forgetting our, our transgressions against one another because if we can't forgive a brother, is God going to forgive you? So all of those things we've been talking about over the years and is still relevant in this time of uncertainty because you know what? We want to make sure we have it right with God. We don't want to hear that voice when he comes bursting through the cloud to establish his kingdom. We don't want to hear that voice that says, depart from me, I know you not. And we are going to say, well, well, you know, I did this and I did that. I healed and I, I, I took care of the sick and I did. He's going to say, depart from me, you know, I know you not. None of us want to hear that. None of us want to hear that. So as we deal with COVID, as we toil on each day of uncertainty with us, just remember these days were spoken of. Jude 1 18 says, in these last times there will be scoffers who will follow after their own ungodly lust. They are out there. We've been saying things 
they've been saying things on and off and they will discourage you because you will hear them. Do not get involved. Conspiracy upon conspiracy about what COVID came from, those things are not our concern. The reality is COVID is here, let's deal with it. No, let's not spend time in, 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 in debating whether the mask should be worn, it's political now. Don't get bogged down into whether conspiracy came from G5 or, that's not our. I would say back home, kettle of fish, meaning our prerogative. You have your Bible to delve into and get an understanding of the word rather than being bogged down by these conspiracy theories and the political part of it and so on. The reality is we wear masks because it has scientifically, it says it can help. It won't get rid of COVID, but it reduces the effects or, the, or to, to catch it. And you think of, not if you don't want to think of yourself, then you think of your brother or your family who you live with because you can bring it to them. Romans 13, 11 says, and do this understanding the present time, the times that we are living in. Understand it. The hour has already come for you to wake up out of your slumber because our salvation is nearer than when we first believe. So this is where the time factor is coming in. Time again is of essence it's critical. COVID came what? And maybe first case was in December 31st. We're almost a year into COVID. Realize that? Have we spent all this whole year what doing what? Eyeing it and 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 you say, well, what's what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen with it? When when it will stop so I can get to go out and have fun. That's the way of the world. We should be eyeing it, yes, and we should be wondering and saying and praying to God for thy kingdom to come and for your will to be done on this planet as it is the desire of our God who sits on his heavenly throne. So maybe COVID just didn't pop out like that, wherever it came from, just didn't pop out like that. It's a reason for it. It's a reason. Ephesians 5.15 says, be very careful then how you live. Be very careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Wisdom. Sometimes we forget that word, you know, wisdom. Because we want to follow. I want to say we are not talking about us on this in the body. We should know better. But the world in general is just want to follow their own ways but it says we should not be unwise but we should be wise making the most of every opportunity now is a perfect opportunity to improve our relationship with god and our fellow men now is the time some of us are at home i know most of us are working from home too but we can spend a little time doing things that we've never done before why? The big question is why? Why should we do this? The Bible says because the days are evil. Think it's good times we are living in? No. We are living in the evil days. Therefore, do not be foolish. It's redeem the time. But understand what the Lord's will is what it is. James 4.13 says, you know what? <laughs> today or tomorrow, some of us will say, well, today or tomorrow we will go to this place or to that city. You know, I'm going to spend a year over there and, you know, do some little business and make some money. I'm going to invest in, and nothing is wrong with that. You know, Don't think the Bible is not using wisdom enough to tell you that nothing is wrong with that. But listen what it says. Verse 14, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? Uncertainty. What is your life? You are mist or vapor. You wake up in the morning sometimes and you see if those of us who live or grow up in the country areas where you have mountains just swooping down, 
from the slope and another mountain slope from the other end and there's a valley and you see whiteness hovering over the valley that's mist. I just love to see that. Guess what? Before the sun rises, that mist is there and then after it comes up, it disappears. That's what life is. It's here for a little while and then it vanishes. So scripture said, instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this and do that. In this time of uncertainty, let's take that on. I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to plan. I'm going to do this, even if I'm going into a little business. But it has to be the Lord's will. We do not make ultimatums on God. Some people tend to do. We don't. We should not. We can't demand that God answers our prayer now or else. I want to hear it by tomorrow. I want a result right after this prayer. That's not how God works. We have to pray. It is his will that this be done. And we have it in the model prayer about his will on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the model prayer is, tells us and guides us how to pray. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it's a sin. That's also is a sin. Sin is not just only the transgression of law. There are other areas of sin that we, we may be overlooking. So if you know to do good and you don't do it, it's a sin. So in these times of uncertainty, we have to recognize that God is our refuge and strength, always ready in the time of need. Psalm 46, 1. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea, when the tsunamis take hit because they're going to come. The tsunamis are coming, are coming. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace will guard your hearts. And we need peace in this time of uncertainty. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Another scripture in 1 Peter 5 tells us that, you know, give all your worries and cares to God. Let's show it at him. Why? Because he cares for us, for you. In Psalm 21, a corresponding verse says, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So don't worry about these things, what you're going to eat and, and drink. God takes care. God takes care. Don't be like the world and the hostility it has there for God, especially in COVID. I just grab a few um, reactions that we have to an ad going on on our evangelism Facebook page, just to show you how people are thinking. We had this ad running, create a record. We got nearly 900, sorry, feedback from it. People were just angry at the church. It was an abortion and we were just talking about abortion and it was just, people were just riled up and questioning who, are, who is the church to talk about what a woman want to do with their body. One person says, until churches pay taxes, I will not listen to what they say. It's blasphemous. I wanted to know what the word blasphemous means. It's blasphemous that they, they don't pay their own way in a struggling society. Another says, no one needs to tell us about a man and his boat with animals. He's talking about Noah and the ark. It was the government of the world. 
For so long, they just don't like the fact that many people don't need them anymore. Hmm. Another says, you are welcome to your beliefs. So as long as you keep them to yourselves, do us all a favor and don't try to meddle with other people's lives. <laughs> Another says, I am not a slave to God, to a God that doesn't exist. One and one other comment, one another comment says, why don't you die earlier to join your God then? Don't you love God? Where do you need to democracy? This is what is out there. Another. And who determine what religion is the almighty right religion? Because every religion claims to be the right religion, and no one has come back from the dead to state without a doubt which religion is the right one. Hear this one. I aborted my baby this morning, and I could not be happier. <laughs> I aborted my baby this morning, and I could not be happier. Another says, there is no God. This is all about the money. So we see what we are dealing with out there. The uncertainty is getting to people. And instead of they join closer to God, they're drifting further, further and further away. Brethren, we know that this road has always been narrow. There will be more pestilences and more wars and more famines, and we have to contend with them. We have to get ready. COVID is telling us in this time of uncertainty to prepare for more uncertainty. That's basically what it says. Deuteronomy 31 6 tells us to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail nor abandon you or I, or I. Dear brothers and sisters, James 1, 2. When trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it go. So that when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. But you know what, brethren? Second Corinthians 2 9 says, or First Corinthians 2 9 says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, or it's even entered into the heart, into our thoughts the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We look at the birds of the year, it says in the word, they do not sow or reap, or they store away anything in the barns. Yet your heavenly father looks after them, feeds them. So are we not more valuable than the birds? We have been created with the, opportunity, with the possibility or the opportunity to become kings and priests in a new kingdom that is coming. A kingdom where everybody's gonna get along, for sure. One people, if we can't get along now, we better start practice how we're gonna get along in the kingdom. Because that's where everybody's heading. Aren't we going to the same kingdom? Yes. So let's unite in that common bond and common sense of purpose to be a witness for Yahweh and advance the good news of his coming kingdom to the hopeless and to counteract the hopelessness that is out there. But we have to be patient as we go through these uncertain times. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your thoughts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus. Trust in the Lord, the word says, with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That is something we must 
have embedded in our minds. In all your ways, you submit that to him and he will make your paths straight. So brethren, I think COVID is a time for us to use to strengthen our relationship with God, to recommit to God because of the uncertainty we are living in. We are even facing another Passover where possibly we may not even get to meet. That's a reality looking at us coming up in about four months time with the cases rising as they are now. We don't know, we leave that in God's hands. That's what we do. We leave everything into his capable hands. This is not my church or your church. You're in the womb, so to speak. What is the church of Jesus Christ? It belongs to him. He's in charge. He directs our path. Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And we know the Lord is good. And he's our refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Do we trust in him? I'm sure we do. Well, it's an exchange. He cares for us. If we trust in him, he cares for us and he does what is right for us. He knows what is right because he is our rock, Psalm 18.2. He is our rock and our fortress and our deliverer. My God is my rock in whom we should take refuge in these uncertain times and shield He's our shield. He's the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. So, do not fear, brethren, the Lord is fighting our battles. He knows our battles. So, we are not guaranteed. Or by the end of this day, so no guarantees. But we must feel secure in our faith, enough to believe that whenever God calls in whatever means he chooses to call us to sleep until the day of resurrection that we are ready and we are prepared because Romans says Romans 8 32 says he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for all gave him up up for us all how will he not also with him graciously gives us all things? Graciously, we live at his mercy. We live at his grace. That's the only two things that are really going to help us to experience eternal life. And we can't even think what it would be like. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has in store for us. My sheep, John 10, 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me. I gave them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. He has called us. It's up to us what we are doing with that call. We use COVID-19 as a guide to say, this is what is coming. Verse. This is just a touch of what is coming. I'm going to end with Isaiah 43, 2, as we wind, conclude this sermon on the uncertainties that surrounds us, that surround us in this life. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not 
consume you. This is the God we worship. A great and awesome and almighty God. Have a good Sabbath break.